Welcome to this tutorial on the VL53LOX version 2 laser time of flight distance sensor. My goodness, that's a mouthful. Anyway, this unit, I bought one of these. I was looking to experiment with it on my obstacle avoidance uh, robot car. And I was looking at this because one of the problems with ultrasonic sensors, I was running out of pins and I just saw this and I thought wow I2C interface I could daisy chain a whole load of these around the car they're a really small item and it would uh, probably work out better than an ultrasonic sensor because one of the issues with an ultrasonic sensor is you've got to be careful in the timings of triggering them if you're using lots of them because otherwise you can get echoes picking up on a different unit Whereas this unit, because it's using an infrared laser, sounds a bit dangerous, but I'm told it's fine. But because it's using light, it's moving at light speed. Therefore, you could trigger these very quickly in succession without ha having any issues whatsoever. So let's have a quick look at this sort of uh, a zoom in of one of these. So this is the actual unit, I2C, so the pins you're going to use is your V in, 5 volts. Uh, I think you can go down to about 2.6 volts on the V in if you're using something like an Arduino Dew or an ESP32. Ground, obviously, it's ground. SCL and SDA, so your clock signal and your data line. And those are the only connections that you require although we'll see later when you start to use multiple versions of these you've actually got to start to use the X shut. Now I took a quick photo of this unit next to a pen just to give you an idea of just how small it is. This actual unit is probably what, five or six millimeters across a very very small unit so from my point of view although as you'll see later it's not really going to be suitable for my car as someone who builds model railways i can actually see a lot of use for this in that sort of scenario where i'm only going to need one so let's get into the code with this now i haven't written the code for this i'm going to be using the adafruit library and you'll see why as we start to go through the tutorial So, as you can see, if you go into the library manager, the first library when you type in VL53L0X is the Adafruit library, which is the one I've installed. There are also a number of other libraries. Now, some of these libraries have got uh, gesture detection sensor code within them. Um, there's a few others down here this unit is quite clever it's not just taking a distance but it's sort of it is able to know where if you like within the cone of area that it's tracking that movement is taking place so you could write a sort of a very simple gesture um, translation system way beyond what i'm going to use so i just went for the standard adafruit library but again, if you're trying to get more high tech, go for some of these, uh, these others. Now, the Adafruit library gives you some examples. And there are four examples. I've loaded up the first and I will mention the other two afterwards. I'm not going to go into the OLED one, but there are some issues with using this unit. So I've loaded up the code. I've put it into my Arduino. And here are the results. So as you can see, as I move my hand closer, 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 gets down to just under 30 millimeters. Below 30 millimeters, I find it does, although it says there that I'm at 26, 27 millimeters, my finger is virtually touching the unit. So I reckon the usable minimum distance is about 30 millimeters. If you let it fire sort of just I'm firing across the room right now obviously it's going out of range although the wall is only about one and a half meters away 
So what I've found is that the longest sort of distance that it really sort of seems to track on yesterday doing some tests I got it at about 1.2 meters so 1200 millimeters so realistically that is its effective range it has a narrower if you like tracking area than you would get with an ultrasonic sensor so if you like your beam your, your target area is going to be smaller which is just something to think about now as you can see it's all working well and it it really is a very good unit so let's close that and now we're going to start to look at some of the issues you can see below where I've compiled the sketch and one of the things that I didn't notice first time round when I compiled this was the amount of memory that this unit was using it really hadn't occurred to me it's not something that I look at a lot I'm just using a library you use libraries all the time but as I discovered when I loaded the next um, example this memory issue starts to become a problem so I'll just switch over the screen and load up the second sketch so this is the second example using two sensors and this is where I really started to find some issues with this unit so with one unit it's fine but the first thing I've compiled it and uploaded it and have a look at that it's using 79% of the dynamic memory and I'm then getting a warning message you know low memory available stability problems may occur now that's only with the two sensors attached I haven't written any other code to do anything with the data coming back from the sensor so realistically on an UNO you're only going to be able to use one of these units now I have tested this with a mega and obviously with a mega with more memory it's absolutely fine and again if you're using something like an ESP32 you're not going to have a problem but this sort of uh, wrecked my ideas of using this with my little robot car because at the moment it is using an UNO it's at this point as well that I started to come across some other issues. So when you're using the library, this uh, module, this VL53L0X, has a default um, I2C address. But obviously, if you've ever used the sort of wire library and things like that, you can only have one item with one address you can't have two items with exactly the same address or it causes all sorts of issues so if you've used say an EEPROM chip or one of the LCD screens with sort of the backpack setting most items when you use them on I2C on the back of the unit somewhere there's a couple of terminals that you can short out that will change the address of the unit now unfortunately with this unit that is not possible so the address can only be set in software and it is not stored in the unit when it powers down so you have to set the address every time so as we start to go through this script uh, example 2 with the dual version you can see they've got the two addresses that they've put in they then have to connect to the X shut pins because you have to lock those things down while you set the address and as you go through the script and I'm not going to go through it in any detail but basically there's a procedure that you go through where you set the addresses one at a time now for me this rather messed up my ideas anyway because it would have meant that for each unit rather than just having everything on the I2C bus I'm just going to have to have extra wires going to these pins anyway. I might as well stick with my ultrasonic sensors. But you know the big one here is just this whole low memory issue. And if you look at the other example that they give you, this was down here to the, the multiple one. Now in this example it loads um, four modules. So again you've got multiple versions being set up again you're going to have to have a uh, a mega 2560 or an ESP32 
to use this sort of thing but again it works in a similar way but the whole problem is that you're just going to finish up with more and more wires that I really didn't want if I wanted to use the uh, I2C bus. So the unit in itself is a good unit and if you want to use just one then I think it's absolutely great. It seems extremely accurate and very very fast without the concerns um, that I would have with an ultrasonic sensor with it bouncing one signal off onto another but unless you're going to use a more powerful board you're not going to be using more than one of these units on your uno and that really sums up this unit it's got an i2c interface it's very accurate but it uses a lot of memory and it's a bit of a pain that the addresses have to be set in software every time the board restarts. What I'm looking at using this for at the moment is putting it onto a model railway and actually in putting it in an engine shed to give me a readout as I put engines in there to make sure I don't hit the back wall, that sort of thing, or to detect items as they go by to trigger sensors. For that sort of thing, I think it would be very good. But unfortunately for my robot car, I think this one's a miss so a bit of a shame there but a very very good unit if you've got the right use for it so i hope this has been useful if you're looking at these and uh, if it has been click the like and subscribe bye for now